Hey guys, welcome back. Today we'll be building a wooden ITX PC with a custom cooled flex power supply. I went to a local lumber yard and picked out a nice looking piece of iron bark for this project. It is always exciting to look through the pile to find the one piece that will be transformed into a unique case. The board was sanded down using the orbital sander followed by hand sanding to have a smooth working surface. I then moved on to cutting the groove that runs through the center of the case. I had a close call here as right before I started the router I noticed the board was the wrong way up. As they say, measure twice, cut once. A chamfer was then given to the inner edges of the case. I find it helpful to place a piece of wood of the same thickness in front of the board to keep the saw stable through the cut. Plywood panels were cut and used to dry fit the case. Some light sanding was needed to remove the burn marks from the saw blade. I applied glue to the board instead of onto the paper template as the moisture in the glue tends to wrinkle the paper when applied directly. Now we can center punch the drill holes and score the lines using a knife. Scoring the lines help reduce chip out when cutting later on. A tip to get clean drill holes on both sides of plywood is to first drill through using a small drill bit, then drill out the hole from both sides. Next, I tackled the power supply modifications. In my previous build, I swapped out the 40mm fan with a Noctua model but was still not satisfied with the noise. This time, I wanted to use an 80mm fan to reduce the noise even further. I would also like to mention that I do not recommend doing modifications to power supplies as they can be very dangerous when mishandled. I take no responsibility for the replication of the processes shown in this video. The IEC socket was also removed as it would not have worked with how I planned to mount the PSU into the case. A faceplate was constructed by gluing several printed panels together. This plate uses the same mounting points as the original part and adds mounting holes for the 80mm fan. The protective film was trimmed to allow for better airflow. I noticed the film was buckling under the cover which would allow some air to bypass the components. This was fixed by cutting the film to allow for overlap. These brackets were printed with spring clips near the bottom as there are no mounting points at the bottom of this PSU. The top will be secured with the existing mounting points. The input wires were extended to reposition the IEC socket to the back of the case.
Some heat shrink was used to insulate these cables. The wires were secured at the top with a cable tie to act as a strain relief. To finish off the modifications, a ventilation cover was designed with some additional details added. I used a silver brush to highlight the raised surfaces of the logo to give it a machined look. The ventilation shroud was glued onto the power supply with little drops of super glue. The logo plate was stuck on using a small piece of double sided tape. The 80mm fan was then plugged into the original 2 pin fan header and secured with 4 screws. I then spent half a day making custom length modular cables. With the cables done, we can now start installing the parts. The GPU power cable is routed flat under the power supply to keep it neat. A big shout out to ASUS for kindly providing this 6600 XT for the build. This card should provide similar performance with my old 1080 Ti while requiring less power and cooling. Since you last saw it, the case has been glued together and given a coat of furniture wax. I am satisfied with the finish of the internal chamfers but there is definitely room for improvement here. I used the same button bracket as my previous build with a different paint job. All the components can now slide into the case. The rear panel can be screwed on after the AC inputs were connected. Another printed bracket was used to secure the GPU. The new fan on the PSU is very silent. Here is a sound clip of the PC on idle. Under full load, the PSU fan cannot be heard over the other components. I was expecting better temperatures from this CPU cooler, but I think the way I mounted it was not ideal. I would have liked to have the fins orientated vertically for better airflow, but the motherboard VRMs were in the way. Anyways, if you enjoyed this build, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thanks.